58 degrees Fahrenheit. That was the average global temperature for all of 2020, according to a new report from the World Meteorological Association. That makes 2020 one of the three warmest years on record. The report just out today says that La Nina, a naturally occurring cooling climate phenomenon, put a break on the heat only at the very end of the year, and that the 2010s were the hottest decade on record. On the phone to discuss more about this is Bloomberg Sustainability Editor Eric Rostin. Eric, thanks for joining us on Quick Take. What are the main takeaways from, from this year's report? The main one, the, the top line headline you just said, 2020 was tied with 2016 as the hottest year ever. There's, there's five or six different research groups around the world who go through original uh, temperature data from weather stations, buoys, and ships and figure out what the average was. It was the hottest decade in uh, recorded history. Every decade since the 1960s has been hotter than the previous decade. And this has been predicted for about that much time. You write that heat waves, wildfires, more intense storms and changes in, in rain and snow all point to a world already facing heightened danger. Uh, I mean, if we think back to the images of 2019 and 2020, those are what we see when it comes to natural disasters. What is the link between the natural disasters that, that seem to be, and I say seem to be happening more frequently and in, with more intensity and the warming climate? I think it's more than seem to be. The scientists in the, in the last five or 10 years in particular are quite explicit, uh, sometimes down to the specific storm or heat wave or wow. weather event just how much worse climate change is making um, often fatal uh, meteorological events. Um, and uh, basically what happens is the more heat we trap in the Earth system, the warmer the air gets, the warmer the oceans get, and that has knock-on effects all through the weather system, all through ecosystems, and frankly, all through our cities and supply chains. So we see it in, in rising ocean levels and more intense hurricanes. Um, this year's Atlantic hurricane season saw 30 named storms and 12 of them, which was a record, hit the United States. You mentioned the wildfires. It's pretty much uh, we are here. Climate change has arrived. This is something that I, I seem to see frequently. A lot of superlatives. Hottest year on record among the hottest years on record. Um, worst years for certain natural disasters. And that's something that you, you highlight in your piece with an interview with Andrew Dessler, a professor of atmospheric sciences at Texas A&M University. Um, how do scientists get the message out to a population that is getting used to hearing these superlatives? It's a, it's a great question. And, and I think it's a subset of, of just the general state of our, our uh, fractured media. How does you know? How does anybody get a message out to to anybody else? It's no longer the 1960s where there were three television stations and and those were the choices. Um, I, I think the scientists have become quite sophisticated in learning how to communicate directly with with uh, publics, uh, with journalists. Um, and uh, they, they're able to distill their messages. And, and you, Andrew Dessler, I included him in the piece because he had a very sort of, I mean, sort of gallows humor take on how to do this. You know, he said 2020 is, uh, is tied for the, the hottest year ever, but you might as well just think about it as one of the coldest years of the 21st century. Oh, that's not a, a, not a good thought. I want to try to end with something potentially positive here, but I don't want to... <laughs> put you on the spot. Um, is there any, any, any sort of silver lining, not to this report, but the way that, that we can think about reversing this trend? Absolutely. Uh, there's an enormous amount of good news. There is an enormous amount of momentum among governments and the private sector, companies, investors. Um, the amount of activity in renewable technologies, deploying renewable technologies, uh, finding new ways to power society, uh, it's just Everywhere you look, there are world historical breakthroughs going on. And what makes this space so exciting to cover is it's a real tight race with the highest possible stakes over uh, whether we're going to be able to deploy all these technologies, cut our emissions in time to avoid, avoid the worst of climate change. 
I certainly hope we can do that. Eric Rostin is Bloomberg Sustainability Editor. Eric, thank you for your time and for, for joining us on Quick Take. We really appreciate it.